Are you ready to do some more coloring? All right, this time we're looking at the fossil evidence that Alfred Wegener looked at when he was going, the continents, they used to be connected. So he went, he traveled between these different continents and looked at fossils and went, look at this, the fossils match on one side and the other, even though they're oceans apart now, this must mean that these things must have been together. So we're going to start the oldest things. So 300 million years ago, there are some plants. So we're going to use our yellow to start with. And in the northern part of Africa, we're going to color with yellow. So we're coloring in. I'll try not to color too quickly again. So these, these kind of weird planty, marshy things 300 million years ago were found in both northern Africa and in Europe. And so that's where, the, and then the northern kind of Laurasia. So they said, hmm, that's very odd that these plants would be on both places. So that must mean at one point that Europe and Africa were connected. And we can see they're not too far apart, just the Mediterranean Sea between the two of them. So you go, okay, that could be reasonable. But what other evidence do you have? Okay, so next we're going to be using our green. And this is a fern called Glospteris. And actually on the presentation, there's a slide, there's a link to more information where you can see how to pronounce these amazing words. So Glospteris was a little plant. It's a little fern. So ferns are like, they're nice little greenish plants. Um, so we're going to be coloring them in. And you'll notice there's some in Australia here. I see some in South America. Okay, here's some more Glospteris. Let's see. Ah, there's some in India. So all of these are their own separate little pieces. Very interesting. Over here we have Antarctica. Look at that. There's a whole big stripe of them. And this is where they've actually found fossils of these ferns. These are plants. Um, I don't know if they're still around anymore. That would be a good thing to look up. And all across the southern part of Africa, there's this kind of stripe where they would find these ferns. Not everywhere, but just in this kind of region. There we go. So that's the Glossop Terrace. All right. So next... They, he found some remains of a Mesosaurus. So a Mesosaurus was about 240 million years ago. We're going to use blue. And they were these friendly, nice little alligator guys. So right here in southern uh, um, South America, we'll color in this alligator guy. So this is a great one to look up on Wikipedia. Look for the pictures of this. This is the Mesosaurus. And so if we think about alligators, they can swim. But can they, they can swim in kind of marshes and things. But can they swim across the entire ocean? That doesn't seem too likely. So they lived in lakes or bays, but they probably could not have swum across the entire Atlantic Ocean. Okay, just very interesting. Uh, next, we're going to go to the Cygnanthus. So then we're going to use our orange. So Cygnanthus, they're about three meters long. So that's kind of, that's a significant thing. You can use three meter sticks, line up three meter sticks together. That's how long they were. And these are the guys, they've got these tails. So it's kind of giant hippopotamuses with long tails kind of things. So once again, they're not, their bodies aren't really designed for lots of um, long swimming. Maybe you can see them kind of splashing around the water, but they're not, they're not ocean goers. They're not like whales or I don't know anything else that would swim in the ocean for a long time. It was a weak swimmer 230 million years ago that these guys, that the, we found evidence of their fossils. And our very last one was the land dwelling, a guy who lived on the land named the Lystrosaurus and females, yes. Um, Lystrosaurus, they laid eggs on land, so they had to be on land and probably couldn't swim. So these guys are much more like hippos, um, just kind of big things. So we're going to color them in brown. So there's some in Africa. And oh, there's some in India over here. Interesting. These kind of big muscly things. We'll take it. And once again, Google it, look up their pictures and see what they actually look like. And then we got a little bit here on Antarctica. All right, so with this, you've actually done all the coloring on this assignment that you need to do. So we've colored in all of our different regions. We've got all the same animals are all matched with the same color. So your next task is to cut out these continents. Please cut out around the dotted lines, and it says that, because these are considered the continental shelf. This is also part of, this is crust that's under the ocean, but it's still rather thick. It's kind of considered to be part of the continent. It's not oceanic crust. So all this continental crust, cut them out. And see if you can assemble these five continents so that these animals could technically walk across. So I'd say, okay, if we have this orange, how could they get from here to there? How could you place them? How could this fern, which doesn't really have legs, and the spores wouldn't go across the ocean, how can it connect all of these different continents? That is your challenge. So please cut it out, assemble it together, glue it down, take a picture, and awesome. You are supporting Alfred Wegener's theory of continental drift.